Whilst I finish up the final details of Worthington Farms, I thought we'd do something a bit different this week. A short while back, Nerd Chacho asked me to create a building for his park, Fundy Fun Spot. If you haven't checked it out, you can click the link in the top right now for something to watch after this. In his words, Fundy Fun Spot is a British seaside park based loosely on Fantasy Island in Skegness. If you like my content, then you're sure to love Nerd Chachos too, so make sure to go and subscribe. Outside of the park itself, he made the brave decision to build a whole town too. As part of said town, I built a beach hut style row of shops, as shown here. Let's take a look at how this masterpiece came together. Nerd Chacho sent me this image as a reference, which was a massive help as I'm super great at copying stuff. I started off by choosing the shops. I tried to go for typical seaside food with a mix of food and drink. I used wooden plank walls for the front and smooth concrete for the rear. Wood tile roof for the huts and the firehouse roof for the backstage area. All of the Planko shops have different coloured hatches, so I covered them up with some art shapes, coloured to match that of the reference image. I used the tar pitch roofing as a canopy, but buried half of it into the wall. A few modern beams blend this with the rest of the build nicely. More basic shapes create a lovely trim for the roof. I added some western signs with text to match the corresponding food types, before sinking them into the beam. I found some TMTK chalkboards to match our shops and placed them accordingly. I then popped down some basic flooring, knowing Nerd Chacho would blend this with the surrounding area later on. I added a staff room for our loyal staff and recreated my signature fire exit. For the backstage area, I added fencing, various bins, dirt decals, and the usual electrical bits and pieces. I recreated the security alarm from the image using an art shape and emergency light. I then added an anemometer because I figure being so close to the sea it's probably a good idea to keep tabs on wind speed. I figured out which shops required condiments and placed down an appropriate amount for each. As Nerd Chacho pointed out in his video, I weathered the building an appropriate amount based on its proximity to the sea. To dirty the roof, I added a dirt decal, some newspapers, and a rogue football. For the lighting, I used the firehouse floodlights, some fairy lights, and then the usual area lights. I'm very happy with how this build came out and thoroughly enjoyed working with Nerd Chacho. Some would say we make a great collaborative team. 
Next on the agenda is the Channel 5 Gaming Shop Contest. Despite not doing very well in the contest itself, I was very happy with the build I created. I went with a realistic Heiasushi restaurant wrapped around a winter zen garden heavily inspired by the Hokkaido level in Hitman World of Assassination. That's right, another Hitman influence build. It's almost like it's one of my favourite games. To see an entire Hitman ride experience, click the card in the top right now. But now for the speed build. I began by creating the basic layout. The initial ground plan created this fun character, which made me chuckle. Next I laid the pathing. Being a blueprint, it's important to make the pathing as simple as possible, so I used the grid system. To avoid guests clipping, I buried a whole bunch of barriers on the corners of walls. I decided to start with the Zen Garden and work out. I made the frozen river out of art shapes. I then used rocks to cover up the harsh edge. Knowing that this blueprint was going to be placed on a grass biome map, I got rid of the snow so I knew what I was working with. I used the snow pieces from the festive collection to create built up snow by the rocks. Every Zen garden has a bridge. I started by adding planks to create the basic shape. I flipped a few of them to avoid repeating textures before flattening out the middle section. Some beams and pillars created the initial structure. I then used a selection of the smallest hydro beams there are to create the intricate Japanese design. I made these custom light cubes using buried lamps and temple pieces. As there are no cherry blossom trees in the game, I created one using a dead tree and ironwood bushes. I then added the cherry blossom special effects to really sell my fake tree. I used the creosote bush as some wintry foliage before laying down some basic shapes as fake snow. To add some texture, I popped down some more artificial snow. In case you're wondering, I tried covering the whole area with these pieces, but it looked like a patchwork blanket. I sunk a whole bunch of snow effects under the ground to really add to the atmosphere. I surrounded the garden with smooth concrete walls and pillars, leaving gaps for doors and windows.
I created a Japanese style fascia using wooden pillars and repeated this across the whole restaurant in various designs. To detail the windows, I used wooden planks as a frame. I doubled up the firehouse emergency light as a nice outdoor lamp. To finish off the windows, I covered the seams with hydro beams. As you know, I'm all about realism, so I wanted it to seem like the river actually goes somewhere. I made an inlet and an outlet using plaster walls and beams. As none of the in-game doors are in the Japanese style, I opted for creating my own. I achieved this using western doors, beams, pillars, and hydro beams for the detailing. I later added some glass to keep the elements out. I shoved a trim on the roof using the modern beams. I then repeated the wooden fascia on the inside but with thinner beams. Something I really wanted to incorporate from the start were some light boxes with Japanese calligraphy, another feature stolen from the Hitman environmental design. So I popped a screen on the wall and later photoshopped some images. Moving on to the main eating area, I started with adding the essential shops and facilities, a staff room, toilet, and two Heia Sushi shops. Much like in the Fundy Fun Spot build, I decided to cover up the default color scheme as it clashed with the building design. I added the shop front piece and then made some adjustments. I created a trim for the hallways using wooden planks. I made some large windows using beams, beams, beams and more beams. Oh, and glass. I decided to make even more custom lighting with these stubby box lights made using lamps and art shapes. With the calligraphy art in place, I copied it around the build. Am I a bit salty that Channel 5 didn't get the custom media working for the showcase? Only slightly, but I'll get my revenge one day. As usual, I added some area lights, but soon noticed it created some distracting reflections, so I swapped out the pathing for flagstone instead. I was keen to make a nice cosy seating area at the front of the restaurant, taking direct reference from this image. I created a wooden floor using the haunted house wooden floor panels.
Next, I made a nice modern railing using wooden planks, glass and beams. After adding a bunch more walls, I made a start on the roof. I used basic shapes and beams, my two favourites. After placing down the initial pieces, I went back and adjusted it to create a nice smooth curve. The main centerpiece for this area is a large cabinet with multiple different sections. I made the frame out of art shapes and copied the signature lightbox design from across the way. I added some bookshelves, a fireplace, logs and some plants. I found these wonderful TMTK furniture pieces on the workshop by Delgus that match our theme perfectly. I took the whole lot and copied it over to the other side, before adjusting it accordingly. I popped some windows where windows should be, and then added a ceiling. With everything in place underneath, I could now copy and paste our roof design all the way across. However, I soon realised this roof was almost 1,000 pieces on its own, so I removed every other strip of beams. Next came a whole heap of roof and wall work. For the interior upper level, I used the city brick wall and wooden decking, a combination I've used a few times in previous builds. Next, I made a modern trim using beams and the emissive panels. I created these Japanese lamps off camera using more panels, beams and some TMTK electrical bits. I used more of the same TMTK furniture for in here but added some barriers to stop guests walking through them.
As the lamps and neon don't give off any light, I added some area lights. I used smooth concrete for the ceiling and the firehouse roof on top. I finished off the toilet area with much of the same decor. I used Haplo's Nicodemus font for the sign with some pillars as support. After realising I'd reached the 4k limit, I did some resource management with the roof to get some piece count back. Now came the fine details with a shutter, fire exits, vents and aircon. For lighting, I copied the lights from the courtyard, added some arm lights to the sign, boosted some areas with area lights, and then made a ceiling panel with box lights and art shapes. Finally, I added some uplighters and speakers to the front of the building, playing the Japanese World Fair music. For the cinematics, I'll leave you with a trailer I made for the workshop. Enjoy, and I'll see you next week for the tour of Worthington Farms.